Alrighty, here we go. Day seven's about to begin. Again, fingers crossed, hopefully today goes well. No more dumb mistakes and that uh, we're able to kind of crank through it. But uh, at any rate, grab their inputs, everything's set up. Let's get started on day seven here. Grab a puzzle input, doesn't look too bad. Nice one-liner again. All right, day seven. A giant whale has decided that your submarine is its next meal and it's much faster than you are. There's nowhere to run. Suddenly a swarm of crabs, each in its own tiny submarine. Uh, it's too different than otherwise. <laughs> okay, zoom to rescue. They seem to be preparing to blast a hole in the ocean floor. Uh, sensors indicate a massive underground cave system just beyond where they're aiming. The crab submarines all need to be aligned before they have enough power to blast a large enough hole for your submarine to get through. It doesn't look like they'll be aligned before you, the whale catches you. Maybe you, you can help. There's one major catch. Crab submarines can only move horizontally. You quickly make a list of the horizontal positions of each crab. Uh, puzzle inputs. Crab submarines have limited fuel, so you need to find a way to make all their horizontal positions match while requiring them to spend as little fuel as possible. Uh, okay, this means that the there's a crab with a horizontal position of 16, a crab with a horizontal position of 1, and so on. Okay, each uh, change of one step in horizontal, horizontal position of a single crab costs one fuel. Uh, you can choose any horizontal position to align them all on, but the one that costs the least amount of fuel is horizontal position 2. Okay, so you have to condense them all to 1. Okay. This costs a little 37 fuel. Uh, this is the cheapest possible outcome. More expensive outcomes include aligning position 1, 41 fuel. Okay, yeah. Determine the horizontal position that the crabs can align to using the least fuel possible. How much fuel? Okay, so we have to go through and figure out where they're going to... Okay. Uh, well, first let's just convert these all to integers because this is going to be, oh, well, we can't do that. Um, well, we will convert these all into integers. Um, and this is going to be uh, positions or crab positions, I guess. Um, and for all the strings and in our inputs here, just go through again like we did yesterday, convert them all. Um, to integers. So, how do we want to go about figuring out the least amount of movement? Um, we're probably gonna make this a method. So, um, it basically it's gonna be a distance from each one is what it's gonna be coming down to. So, um. Uh, get cost to position. This is not C. It's not JavaScript. Um, and a list of integers. I don't know. I feel like doing this the the naive way is gonna cost us in the second bit. Um, but we're kind of going towards this. So the naive position is just to do have an integer uh, or I'll do a long cost. Um, is it zero? And then um, basically go through all of the crab positions um, and basically just do, you know, cost plus equals. Um, actually, this can just be a long, only be like that. Cost plus equals. Um, Math dot absolute of two position minus uh, i, and then you know, return cost here, and we just want to find the least. Um, so for um, uh, we can make this a little bit better because we can do the min. Uh, we can do the math of this. So we can actually do um, look at a stream here. Uh, min. Uh, this is a integer compared to. How was it like first? Or I just get. Um, this is the min. And then we can have our little max here. Um, that's because it's going to be max. So we can go from min to max. We can just do this. So for uh, int um, location equals min, while uh, location is less than or equal to max. Um, Plus plus again. This is the naive way we're gonna go through all of them and just see where is the lowest. Um, lowest cost is gonna be 
whoops, uh, we're gonna start at the max integer. That way the first one will uh, of course be lower than that. And then we'll also have an int um, low lowest position, uh, negative one for right now. Or actually we'll start it at min, sure. Um, so we'll go through all this, then we'll do this logic here. Again, I don't need to break this up. This is just kind of what I came to pass the crap position in, pass the location in, and then uh, we have cost here. And then we should check here if the cost is less than our lowest cost. Go ahead and set lowest cost equal to cost and set lowest position equal to position. Again, this is the naive way. I, I feel like it's gonna, again, cost us, ha ha ha. Um, in the long run, or maybe in, maybe this part, maybe the next part. Um, but uh, what's it wanting? Uh, how much fuel do they spend to align at that position? Okay, so we just want, um, oops, lap lowest cost. Shall we see? What happens if we run this? What do we get? Oh, I messed this up. Um, Cause this needs to be input split. No. Oh, input, sorry, input gets zero split. I messed that up, there we go. Let's see, does this terminate or does it just go for our yeah, It terminates, okay. Took a while and we didn't get it right. Ah, that's unfortunate. Um, Okay, let's use their input here. What do I get? 49. Um, 37, what's the 39? Um, min, max, that looks all right. Um, I don't fully see the problem here. Um, let's just do a system out print line of cost plus location. What do we get with these? Ah, well, they're all 49, so there's one problem. Uh, well, because we're all giving, we're always giving lowest position. Haha. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, crab and lock there. That's my typo. 37. Okay. Fixed it. Uh, more dumb mistakes, but there we go. So now this should be our correct answer. Again, it took 23 milliseconds, which is actually pretty slow with how these should be. I have a feeling that with part two here, we're gonna get uh, screwed over. So anyways, the crabs don't seem interested in your proposed solution. Perhaps you misunderstand crab engineering. Turns out crabs and marine engines don't burn fuel at a constant rate. Instead, each change of one step in order to position costs one more unit. Uh, the first step costs one, the second step costs two, the third step costs three, and so on. Um, okay, so it's exponential. So it's gonna be one, two. So it's going to be factorial? No, uh, that's addition of it. Um, So it's cost of position two. So this is the distance. Uh, I don't know. There's what's. It's not factorial because factorial is the multiplication with them all. Um, what's there's a there's a math equation. Um, the, it's a math equation of like adding numbers from one to whatever. It's, uh, I don't know what it's called and I don't remember. I know it's a thing. It's like, um, oh uh, no. Hold on, I'm gonna Google this right now. Okay, I don't know what I was looking at. This is, that was a terrible example. Um, all right, ignore what I was looking at. It's distance times distance plus one. This is what I was thinking of, and I don't know why it gave me something completely different. 
That's what I wanted. Uh, cast along, sure. Yeah, still cast along. Uh, we can make just like this along, that's fine. Okay, so that will give us our right distance now if we just go ahead and dump this into here. I actually even need lowest position. I'm curious if this will give us our answer if it'll take too long. No, okay, so it did with that formula. Hey, we did it. All right, sweet. Um, curious. If, okay. Interesting. Uh, well, uh, the leaderboard's broken, apparently. All right, well, the leaderboard seemed to be broken. I don't know. I don't think I did that amazing. This was a lot easier than it was. I kind of, between not knowing the math formula on top of my head and whatnot, um, I could have done this much quicker. But at any rate, let me clean up the code again. Um, I think this is better for me to clean this up after doing this, and then I'll go through and explain uh, my solution here. Okay, so code's cleaned up. Um, really, I didn't clean up a lot. I just removed the uh, extra variable that wasn't actually needed here and then also made the two parts uh, distinct and kind of separate. I like doing this just because it helps just explain, but also for you to see both parts separately. But uh, at any rate, day seven, um, how did TLDR this? There's a bunch of crabs and you have to line them up in a certain way. The crabs are in submarines for whatever reason and they cost fuel. I don't really know how to summarize this. Basically, Let's just go with this. Crabs are in submarines. You have to line up these submarines, and to move the submarines around, they cost fuel to move them um, a space or whatnot. And you're trying to find the least amount of fuel that they use to move them into a um, single horizontal line, I guess. Uh, it's the best I can do, but uh, you probably better reading the question. I don't know, it's a hard one to summarize. But at any rate, um, starting off this one by just converting all of our inputs, which was a big long string of numbers and commas, breaking that up and putting it into a list of integers from there finding the minimum and maximum numbers in that this is useful for knowing um where kind of the numbers on our line can be for possible positions of the um the least amount of fuel distance to um because if it's outside of these extremes there it's it's going to be bad worse you know the, you're only going to get higher values as you go far outside that's why we're constraining this to the minimum maximum values um, for part one, um, these are both kind of very similar. For part one, we have a we're holding our lowest cost uh, valuable var lowest cost var variable lowest cost value here. Um, this is kind of the running lowest cost. We're going to go through all of these positions. So from min to max, we're going to calculate the cost it takes to move all the crabs to that uh, position. The calculation for that is pretty easy. Just go through all the crabs position, take their take the absolutes of that position two, subtracting with where they're at, absolute of that will give us the distance they have to travel to there when it's because it's one fuel for one spot. Um, it's just a one-to-one -one there. So we can just go ahead and add that distance under our total cost and then return that. And then based upon that return, if it is lower than our current lowest cost, we'll then set our lowest cost to that new value and continue that process until we've gone through all the possible positions and we have the lowest cost now saved. And that's part one. I was afraid that that was going to be too naive for part two, but turns out no, and turns out that part two works exactly the same way. The only difference is that the calculating the cost from position A to position B isn't straightforward in that uh, one position costs one, but two positions cost three because it's two for the second one, three for the third one, so you know, it keeps going up and up and up. There is a math formula for that. Um, this pops up randomly, you know, whenever someone asks you the calculus, you know, add up the numbers from 1 to 100. Well, there's a very easy solution to that. And it's just this little formula here. You take the uh, the total range you're going over, which is uh, in this case going to be our two position and then subtract it with where we're from. So that's the distance where we got to go. You take the distance, you multiply it by the distance plus one, and then you divide it by two. It's just a math formula that you kind of pick up. Um, I didn't know off the top of my head, but I know of it. Um, I know it's there for when you want to do this type of thing. So luckily I knew about that. I was able to Google it, find it real quick, and then plop it in here. And again, the logic for this beyond that is exactly the same as part one. And we were able to get for both parts. So uh, overall, the parts are very similar. Just know that that's kind of your little trick for this one to keep it running uh, smoothly. But uh, 
the naive part works for once. So, at any rate, that's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you guys in the next part eight. Peace out.